Hello, my name is Martin Blunt. I'm a professor of Flow in Porous Media. And what today's video is, is to try and motivate you to understand why this is an important and fascinating subject. So what are porous media? Porous media, essentially solid materials, but they have holes in them. And we're interested in flow, so these holes connect. The media are permeable. Well, where do you see porous media? Well, when you made your coffee this morning, it was percolating through coffee grains. That's a pore space between solid. Look at the clothes I'm wearing. These are porous media. They're fibrous. They can trap air. What about cloths or tissues? Those are porous media as well. In biology, our skin is a porous medium. It allows the transfer of fluids and air. Our eye is a porous medium. Our lungs, our blood vessels, all of these are porous media. You see them in manufactured devices, electrolyzers and fuel cells that either generate or use hydrogen to create electricity. These contain porous materials. C catalysis, cat catalysts are porous materials. But what about underground? What happens when it rains? Soil is a porous medium. Water will percolate through the soil and then it will be taken up by the plant's roots and the plants and trees again are porous media. If we go deeper underground, the soil becomes solid rock. The grains are essentially fused together. I have a sample of a carbonate rock, so essentially made out of chalk type material, calcium carbonate in my hand. Deep underground, these rocks are saturated with water, normally salty water, but they also may contain oil and gas resources. As we move towards net zero, we're not so interested in producing that oil and gas, but we are interested in dealing with the carbon dioxide associated with their combustion. How do we do this? We collect the carbon dioxide from point sources, say fossil fuel burning power stations or heavy industry, and then we inject it deep underground into porous rock. Similarly, when we're looking at renewable energy, Renewable energy is intermittent. We need to store that energy. Where can we store it? Well, in batteries. It's a porous medium. At very large scales, however, we also need to store it in another form, and that form could be hydrogen. Large-scale storage of hydrogen, again, can only be done deep underground. So let's show that with just a few numbers. Our current CO2 emissions... were approximately 35 gigatons per year. A gigaton is 10 to the 9 tons or 10 to the 12 kilograms. If we want to store a substantial fraction of that to prevent that CO2 going into the atmosphere, we're needing to store tens, 10 to the power 12 type masses of CO2 in the subsurface. That can only be done deep underground in porous rock. Now let's think about renewable energy. Currently, we produce every year 600 exajoules per year. This is 6 times 10 to the 20 joules. This is equivalent to approximately 20 terawatts. That's 10 to the 12, so it's 20,000 gigawatts. We want to store energy at this scale. I'm not saying that we have to store a whole world's use of energy somewhere just in case we don't produce any energy for a whole year, but we need to be looking at things that are in the range of about 10 to the 20 joules. That will equate, and I'm not going to go through the numbers, but it's a fairly simple calculation to do, something of the order of a gigaton of hydrogen. Where can that be stored? Deep underground. In terms of storage as thermal energy, say hot water for heating, or indeed cool water for cooling, 
the numbers are even larger. We're looking at tens, if not hundreds of gigatons. So for the energy transition, as we move towards net zero, flow in porous media is an absolutely crucial subject. Understanding how we can manipulate gigatons of fluids in the subsurface, and if we're looking at hot water or hydrogen, not just putting it down, but extracting it. And there's also a huge range of other important topics. How do we design batteries, electrolyzers, fuel cells with porous media? How do we design catalysis? How do we design materials? How do we understand the transfer of fluids in porous media from soils to biological tissues? But it's not just that. The technology that we have to study these pro problems has also gone through a revolution. With x-rays and other forms of imaging, we can see inside otherwise opaque pieces of rock like this. We can see in three dimensions at micron resolution. So we can see the gaps between the sand grains that you can't see in this video, but you can with x-rays in three dimensions and not just the rock, but the fluids within the rock and also at the high temperatures and pressures that we might have encountered deep underground. So we have the ability to image and see what's going on. Secondly, with obviously advances in computer algorithms and in computer power, we can apply sophisticated numerical algorithms to simulate the flow, to create digital twins of our systems of interest, and to use them for better design and management. Subsequent videos will go through some of the science associated with flow in porous media. But it's a fascinating subject and it's got new technology and new ideas and I will be describing some of these in the subsequent videos. Thank you very much.